The Australian plague locust is a devastating agricultural pest. It can rapidly increase in numbers and form very dense swarms, which are highly mobile. The potential for plague locust damage and their ability to travel up to 1,000 kilometres within 24 hours has made them a declared pest in New South Wales under the Rural Lands Protection Act. Being a declared pest means all landholders are obliged to report locusts to their Rural Lands Protection Board and to continuously suppress and destroy them. The adult Australian plague locust has characteristics which make it relatively easy to identify. There's a dark spot at the tip of the hind wings and red shanks on the hind legs. A dark X mark is also present on top of the neck. The adult female locust is 4 centimetres long and the male is a little shorter at about 3 centimetres. Immature locusts are called nymphs but they're commonly known as hoppers. These are more difficult to identify than other types of locusts and grasshoppers. Identification is easiest around two weeks when they form a large mass covering the ground. When nymphs form these bands, it's likely that they are Australian plague locust nymphs. Generally, locust plagues develop when widespread areas of inland Australia receive good rainfall in successive seasons. High rainfall stimulates good growth of grass, making the habitat ideal for locust breeding. The timing of rainfall events is critical to ensure high survival of locust nymphs and to ensure breeding continues from one generation to the next. While rainfall is the most important factor in plague development, migration of locusts from other areas also contributes to the size and location of outbreaks. The natural breeding point for the Australian plague locust is the southwestern Queensland overflow region. They then migrate into southern Queensland and northern New South Wales. But locusts may not always originate from this region. They can be from hatchings not noticed in tall grass in northern New South Wales or from outbreaks that have simply been neglected by some landholders. A locust plague can collapse suddenly under the right conditions. Spring droughts kill hatchlings and summer droughts prevent the sexual maturing of adults. Locust eggs can be parasitised by cilio wasps and adult locusts can be parasitised by fly maggots or locusts can simply migrate to other districts. Locust occurrence depends entirely on weather and feed conditions. In New South Wales, hatching typically begins in September in the north through to October in the south, with maturity of locusts occurring in November and December. Eggs laid by this generation of adults will hatch in late December and throughout January producing a second generation of adults in February and March. The second generation of adults may lay eggs and depending on conditions, these may hatch before winter, in April and May, or lay dormant until the following September to October. Throughout this period of spring to autumn, migration of locusts from other areas may occur, and conversely, a generation of adults may migrate from the area. When conditions are good, with warm weather and suitable feed, mating occurs. Female locusts lay in batches called pods in the soil, usually at a depth of 2 to 10 centimetres. Bare, firm, compacted soil is usually targeted. Sometimes locusts will test drill the soil, but not actually deposit eggs. A collection of egg pods laid by a number of locusts is termed an egg bed. Egg beds may vary from a few square metres to several hundred square metres and be scattered irregularly throughout the region. Each egg pod will contain 30 to 60 pale yellow banana shaped eggs that are 5 to 6 millimetres long. An individual female may lay up to four pods in a lifetime. Each pod is sealed with a froth plug which protects the eggs from extreme temperatures and ensures adequate moisture is available for development. Eggs need warmth and moisture to develop and will suspend development if these needs are not met. In summer, eggs may hatch within 14 to 16 days, while eggs laid in autumn will probably remain dormant through winter, then resume development and hatch the following spring. These egg pods will normally be laid closer to the surface than summer laid eggs, which don't become dormant. Eggs in a single egg bed may hatch over a short time, or progressively over several weeks if conditions for hatching are marginal. Hatching normally occurs from spring through to autumn, depending on conditions, with two or three generations hatching during that period if conditions are favourable. 
After hatching from the egg, a locust goes through five growth stages called instars, molting their exoskeleton at each stage. The developing wings become more noticeable at each stage until the locust becomes a fledgling adult. After the final molt, the adult locust emerges with fully formed wings. At first, the body and the wings are still soft, and until they harden after about a week, sustained flight is not possible. Green feed is required to provide fuel for flight and for egg development. Depending on conditions, once sufficient fuel is available for flight, adult locusts may migrate to another area. But in ideal conditions, adult females may lay eggs in the same area. Normally nymphs take four to eight weeks to complete their development, depending on nutrition and temperature. When the population is large and at the second and third instar stages, nymphs will often concentrate into dense aggregations called bands. The bands appear to be marching forwards and the locusts seek to devour as much feed as possible to further their development into an adult. Bands vary in size but can extend over several kilometres. A band can move over one kilometre from the egg bed before the nymphs fledge and consume or damage all vegetation in its path. Damage by nymph bands is confined mainly to pasture, although crops may sometimes be invaded. Advanced crops are not favoured by nymphs and bands will rarely penetrate them, but peripheral damage may be inflicted. If numbers are sufficient, adult locusts may concentrate into dense groups called swarms. These infest areas that are usually less than 5 square kilometres, but can be up to 50 square kilometres. During outbreaks, locust swarms can do widespread and severe damage to pasture, to cereal crops such as wheat and oats, and to summer forage crops like sorghum and lucerne. Winter grain crops have usually dried off by the time adult locusts are active in early summer, but in dry weather, less advanced and more open crops are more susceptible to attack. If sufficient green feed is available to enable flight, but conditions are drying off, migration of locusts may occur. The direction and distance covered during migration depends on temperature, wind speed and wind direction, and may not result in locusts reaching an area with ideal conditions. Migrations of five to 600 kilometres overnight are not uncommon, and this can lead to the sudden appearance of large numbers of locusts in previously uninfested areas. In controlling the Australian plague locust, the aim is to contain the outbreak at the nymphal stage, preventing the breeding and migration of the next generation of insects. The first step in containing a locust plague is for landholders to check their land for signs of locust infestation and report any signs to their Rural Lands Protection Board. Signs include the presence of egg beds and the sighting of adult or nymph locusts. Often the sighting of unusually high numbers of birds, like crows or ibis, can be an indicator of a locust infestation. Effective control of the Australian plague locust is only possible if all landholders remain alert to the signs of locusts, report infestations and contain the locust before they build into a plague. <laughs>